Hey, a pleasant good evening, everybody. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe and This is going to be a preview to our latest, greatest Reading Royals game against the Anirondack Thunder tonight as the Royals continue their great winning ways, hopefully tonight, against the Thunder, who are a team that can definitely be scored upon. But before we get into that in the latest edition of this Royal Take, please continue to subscribe down below or up above on the Easy Juice widget at the end to help us grow to 215 by the end of March, but hopefully mid-March, and then keep growing from there. But let's get right into it as the Royals have been led by great depth and goaltending of late as Fladell played good in back-to-back -back games against the Wooster Railers and Anthony Gagnon was able to step up huge and also Garrett Cockrell was able to get a goal of his own. And then when it comes to next game against the Wooster Railers, the Royals were able to have Jackson Cressy score in, um, and then he scored in back-to-back -back games. By the way, Cormier had a great setup in front as he continues to be on his hot streak. And then Garrett Cockrell scored again, something he's been playing great defensively, and then now he's been pitching in on the score sheet. So you have the depth scoring all over for this team, and that's going to immensely help as we continue to head into this end tier of the season here and towards the Kelly Cup playoffs in first place of the conference, in first place of the division, and potentially having that sweep of the weekend series be the preview of the Kelly Cup as our Royals continue to have their keen success is then against Cam Hostinger, Kenny's brother, who Jared Brandt beat up and fought. Yes, Cam hackled him to the ice, but he got more of the haymaker punches in if you go back and look at that fight. Jared Brandt, de not even a, he's a very good defenseman. It's just on this team with how much defense you have, he's usually sometimes decided as your fourth most minutes, but he's a very good defenseman, steps up, um, fights, and that's great to see a guy throughout the roster. Again, the roster's full of depth as Brandt is the guy that steps up and fights. Kenny Halsinger then gets another goal against his brother on a beautiful setup. McKinnon gets a beautiful blast. Brady Lowe had a nice play in front set up from McKinnon on a backhander. And then Jackson Cressy set the tempo scoring really early in that game. So the team has been great with through and through scoring and assists throughout the entire team. Mack hit his uh, five games to be eligible for the Kelly Cup playoff. Ryan McKinnon and he's played well even when it hasn't even had the opportunity to play a lot of hockey this year at both levels because he's kind of been one of those guys that has just been snake bitten by how much depth both teams have on the defensive end that he hasn't got put in as much. But he's a good defenseman in himself, and he obviously really showcased that as well. Um, and now has going to get an opportunity again with the Phantoms. But let's now, as we move on from Fladell playing two great games against Wooster, Usti played a very good first game against Wheeling back. We'll see who will be in net tonight <clears throat> against the Anirondack Thunder, as then there's two games against the Wheeling Nailers on Saturday and Sunday. One's at 7.10 Saturday, 4.10 p.m. Sunday, as we go back to playing the Wheeling Nailers and probably Clay's in net, but we'll see against a very good team that feels very much playoff atmosphere against the Nailers, as hopefully, as they should, the Royals are able to take care of business against the Anirondack Thunder. Because when it comes to the Anirondack Thunder, as we know, they're not a team that are very plentiful scoring-wise. They only had a 40 win percentage at 20 and 28. Um, they have been pretty piss poor on the penalty kill all the way down at 71%, only 20 on the power play. Only 147 goals for compared to 192 goals against. So again, this is a team you should be able to score on. There are a couple cats you still got to watch offensively, though, even though they don't have the overall abundance amount of goals. They do got Patrick Grosso, Shane Harper, and Tyler Irvine, and also uh, Vidmore, who look pretty uh, tough cats that you got to watch out for them because they can still get it done. And pushing up from the back end, uh, Masonis, Joe Masonis can still get it done as well as Jake Ryshek. So you have to watch out for those guys. Uh, in net, uh, Cassell and Alex Sekaropoulos, who the Phantoms actually claimed for a minute, but then he went right back down. Uh, Sekaropoulos and Cassell have both been inconsistent this year. It's kind of been a teeter-totter of who's more consistent at one time gets the playing, and then who's more consistent the next time gets more playing that week. Uh, so I, we'll have to see who goes in. Um, I think <clears throat> of the two, the guy that has impressed me the most, which obviously it seems like he's impressed rosters the most since he did get a chance as a PTO, with the HL was probably Sekaropoulos, but again, both have been very inconsistent. I would definitely give the Reading Royals the nod for depth on the roster and the nod for just the, the best overall team, definitely in this matchup where the Royals face a lot of tough opponents. So hopefully now coming in against a weaker opponent, they're able to play them like they played against the Indy Fuel 
and not take a weaker opponent for granted, which I don't expect this team to do, but that's something that is the key to this game because you can't do that. They played a bunch of tough opponents, like the Wheeling Nailers, the Rooster Railers of late, so you can't take even a bad team this year in the Adirondack Thunder for granted because they have the Grossers of the world. They have the Harpers of the world. Uh, they have, as I said on defense, the Masonuses, the Rychecks of the world, and they have the Irvines and Vidmars of the world and even MacArthur's of the world. So you got to be able to keep playing the game. you got to be able to keep pushing. Maybe Pritch will be back, but Cressy's been playing great. Cockrell's been great. Cormier's been great. Whether it's um, Kirill, whether it's um, Us, or whether it's Kirill or Usi, the same people, whether it's Kirill, whether it's Flodell, whether it's Hawkey, they've been good in net. Hayden Levine has moved on now. Uh, he was shaky in net, but we have three very good people in net. So this team's built off a of depth. The depth in goaltending has helped them immensely of late. If you can get scoring throughout your defense core and throughout your forward core, that's just going to help you immensely as this team heads towards the Kelly Cup playoffs. So just don't take the Thunder for granted. Keep having the great net front pressure and providing the pressure early because if they're able to come out with jump in this game, they should be able to really handle the Thunder. The Thunder are a team that allow have already almost allowed 200 goals, 192, and don't score much. They have to rely on the stars of the Harpers, Grossos, and Vidmars of the world in order to get their scoring and the rich checks on the back end of Masonis. So um, just shut them down, jam them in the neutral zone, and this should be a fairly good um, game for the Reading Royals because if they don't take the Thunder for granted, there's no reason why they can't keep this winning streak going tonight. And then they play a tough opponent again and playing a team that always feels like a playoff atmosphere um, in the Wheeling Nailers um, this weekend. But when it comes to the Anirondack Thunder, they're last in the division. you got to take advantage of those last in the division teams. Yes, Wooster second to last, but if you look at Wooster by, not even just by the numbers, but on the ice this year, they've been a much more competitive through and through team uh, compared to the Anirondack Thunder, who again have almost allowed 200 goals. I believe Wooster's more in the 170s. So they've been a more competitive through and through team. Anirondack jump on the Murray, and the Royals should be good. But this has been the latest edition of the Royal Take. We talk about how the depth in goaltending has been a keen success to why the team has been great lately. And also, of course, preview this great game against the Anirondack Thunder tonight as our Royals look to make it now seven wins in a row against the Anirondack Thunder. But everybody have a great, safe, and pleasant day. He said, everybody, please do subscribe down below. Up above the EGU's widget to keep us growing to 215 by the end of March. Peace out, everybody.